Hello and welcome to SCAN. My name is Pat Bowes and I'm the executive director of this fabulous organization called SCAN, which means Social Community Activities Network. And today I have two guests and I'm just really excited because I love working with them. And the first person is James Sigerson, mm -hmm. who's the executive director of Community Service Inc. in Ocean County. And our second guest is Luann Kane, from, who is the program coordinator for Take Control of Your Health. And as the show goes on, you'll see why we are concentrating and promoting this fabulous program, um, because Monmouth County is now going to be taking on the role to serve seniors in Monmouth. So welcome. Thank you. I'm really pleased to have both of you here. I mean, it seems like I see you all mm -hmm. of the time, which is wonderful, mm -hmm. and have the opportunity to work with all of your group mm -hmm. uh, and volunteers and train mm -hmm. peer leaders, and it's just been fabulous. So what I'd like to do is for you to share with our viewing audience a little bit about your agency, who's been around for a long period of time doing fabulous work in Ocean County. So tell us about you. Yeah. Community Services Incorporated of Ocean County was started back in 1973 by St. Andrew United Methodist Church in Toms River. What happened is a group of concerned church members saw a need in the senior community surrounding the church and they decided to act and to see if they could do something about that need. And that need was socialization and also senior hunger. So they went out into the community and they decided to bring people from the surrounding retirement community into the church to feed them lunch and the program actually grew from from there in 1974 we got our very first federal grant of about hundred and thirty five thousand dollars to start the meals on wheels program and the congregate nutrition program officially in ocean county and we've expanded the program every year since then to the point where we do about two hundred thousand meals a year we have uh, eight nutrition sites currently and uh, a staff of about uh, 76 people, 38 vehicles, uh, covering all 535 square miles of Ocean County every single day. So, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really very impressive. And, and again, it's interesting when you talk about 1974, because mm -hmm. I started in this business mm -hmm. in 1975. So I remember when the federal government used to call us and say, can you spend some more money? Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen anymore. Unfortunately not. We, I've never received an increase in federal funding in the 14 years I've been the director of this program and I've not received an increase in my funding at all from any source in the last four years. So that means you have to be incredibly creative and entrepreneurial in regards yes. to running your program. Yes. And I do know that your uh, mm -hmm. Ocean County, especially your programs, were hard hit with the recent Superstorm Sandy. Yes. And um, so I really again want to say Thank you for all of the work that you all did in regards to keeping the doors mm -hmm. open and the meals flowing. Um, you were incredibly creative. So um, we will talk a little more about honoring mm -hmm. you because of that and all of the, the years of service. So tell us a little more about the kinds of programs that you do mm -hmm. in the senior centers because I think it's a little right. unique. So in many cases, Meals on Wheels mm -hmm. programs or congregate nutrition programs mm -hmm. Um, don't run centers. They just deliver food there. <laughs> right. So yeah. tell us about that. Um, actually, they're nutrition sites. We, act, we only operate one senior center, and that's in Point Pleasant. Unfortunately, we don't serve lunch at the senior center, but our nutrition sites are a place where seniors from the community can come, and they can engage in social recreational activities and events that we plan for them. Uh, oftentimes, they just like to socialize together, play cards, read newspaper, you know, what, what normal people like to do when they get together and hang out with their friends. We have the added benefit of being able to provide them a nutritious noontime meal. And it's a result of the socialization combined with the good nutrition that promotes the overall health and well-being of that individual. And that is the way that our program is structured from that level. So in, in other words, and in many cases, the programs that you run and, and that I have ran and, mm -hmm. and SCAN specifically really have to do a lot with brain health or brain fitness because Absolutely. the seniors have invested and they come to programs such as yours. Mm -hmm. They stay active in the community, mm -hmm. they participate, they socialize, mm -hmm. and they stay healthy. 
Yeah, it's, 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 it's mental health, there's emotional health. I mean, we all have a need to feel that we're connected to the community, that we're all loved, that we're appreciated. So there are you know, physiological aspects of the program that appeal to just our basic nature and, and character as human beings and the basic needs that we have. And then we add that extra component to that, which is the, the physical health, which is the nutritious meal, because all of those things work together for the overall health and well-being of that individual. Individual. Um, and for those individuals who aren't quite mobile enough to get to our nutrition sites, we provide obviously the home delivered meals. We know it as the Meals on Wheels program. We actually have drivers who go in five days a week and deliver that hot meal to that individual. And aside from delivering that meal and providing that contact with the community for that homebound isolated person, we're doing a safety and assurance check to make sure that that person is safe, that they're well, and if we identify needs, then we refer those people immediately to outreach organizations that can come into the home and help meet the needs of that individual. We provide medical transportation services to and from doctor's appointments in limited geographic areas. We provide transportation to and from our nutrition sites or have partnerships with municipal organizations that assist us. And we provide a whole host of social service support programs to the seniors in a very limited geographic area too. So let's go back to the Meals on Wheels program. Mm -hmm. I mean, to how, do, how does one become eligible and, and mm -hmm. where do they call okay. in Ocean County? Yeah, that's an excellent question. To be eligible for the program, and first let me say this, that this program is a federally subsidized program under Title III of the Older Americans Act. What that basically means is the federal government only gives us some of the money that we need to operate the program. In Ocean County, the federal government gives some of the money, Ocean County also gives some of the money. We have to raise some of the money in order to continue this program at its current level in Ocean County. Um, and I forgot the question. Well, the question is, how does one become eligible? Oh, um, so the federal government, that's what I was going through. So wh what it is, is because the federal government provides a subsidy, they also provide the criteria for eligibility. The eligibility criteria is not established by the local program, by the county, or by the state. The federal government in supports it. The state, the county, enforce it. Um, you have to be 60 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. You have to be completely homebound, unable to attend one of our congregate meal sites. You cannot have the ability to cook or prepare meals for yourself, and you can have no one available to assist you in the preparation of that meal. That is the basic crit eligibility criteria for home delivered meals. And so when someone makes a referral, you go do an mm -hmm. assessment and then you turn on the service if you have the meal slot available. That is correct. And unfortunately, right now, we have a waiting list as a result of our funding limitations of about 125 people who are waiting to receive services. So let's talk about that because it's my favorite mm -hmm. subject, fundraising. Yeah. So is there a cost to the meals to the people who participate in the Meals on Wheels program? We ask for a $2 donation from every participant to help offset the cost of preparing and delivering that meal to them. No one will ever be denied a meal because they're unable to afford that $2 donation. But the don it gets really weird sometimes mm -hmm. when we talk about those voluntary donations. But people don't seem to understand that if we don't collect them, we have to reduce the budget. And so I think the more we can educate the public about the need for that, and also regular donations, not just people who get the meals, but people who don't think about homebound seniors. I mean, I have to tell you, and I'm probably announcing it here for the first time, is that SCAN is taking on the role to collect money for homebound seniors. And we have committed to Interfaith Neighbors in Monmouth County, and I am now committing to you, uh, Community Service Inc., to raise money for to help purchase or adopt some seniors. We're calling our program Seniors Helping Seniors. So I'm not sure what it costs for a year to adopt a senior or so, but we're committed to raising some of that money. And also educating the public about how that is needed. So I'm announcing it live here. So That's I'm, exciting, yeah. Um, it I'm actually. Excited. In our program, it costs $1,920 to feed a homebound senior for one year. We provide one meal, that noontime meal. So when you think about it, 
Um, that is the actual cost of the service to the individual. We ask each participant to only consider a contribution of $2 per meal, which amounts to about $500. So we actually are only asking for a cost share of about 25% of the actual cost. So just give me a phone number mm -hmm. in, in case someone wants to refer a person or make a donation. Okay, the phone number is 732 367 1400. Our website is www.csimow.org. So we're going to take a break right now and we'll be right back. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local Feeding America food bank for help. Welcome back. Um, I am Pat Bowes, the executive director of SCAN, and we are talking to both James Sigerson, executive director of Community Service, Inc., and Lou Ann Kane, who is the program coordinator, project coordinator for Take Control of Your Health. So I really would love to have this conversation about this wonderful program. Um, because you've been very instrumental in helping us here in Monmouth County um, get our program together, train us, um, very professionally I might add, and also um, embrace us, both of you, for um, sharing all of the stuff that you've created over the last few years on this program. So tell the audience about what is this um, take control of your health dealing with chronic disease self-management workshops. The workshop was created by Stanford University and basically we asked participants to come for six weeks for an hour and a half, two and a half hours each week. And what they do is they learn techniques of how to deal with a chronic disease. We don't talk about specific illness but we learn how to deal with for example pain and fatigue. Uh, we learn better habits of eating, of exercising. It's a very interactive class, and the participants that come really enjoy getting the support from each other and also sharing their experience, because what works for you may very well help someone else in dealing with that chronic illness. During that two and a half hours, we give them a 20-minute break where they have some refreshments that are healthy for them. It also gives them an idea that they can share with each other and to, again, get that socialization that you mentioned earlier that's so very important. Mm -hmm. So it helps people to really deal with a very serious mm -hmm. part of their life and helps them to realize that they can still live a fulfilling and a very active life in spite of the condition. Our leaders are trained, and they also have chronic conditions, which means that they can empathize with the individuals that are experiencing, and they can understand uh, and really hear what they're saying. So it's a great program. So I would like for you to give us the definition of chronic disease. I mean, it's one of the things that we talk about. I have been trained, so I am a certified trainer. Um, but I think it was a really important eye-opening piece for me. What is chronic disease? versus um, just having a health issue? Good question. The chronic disease is something that's going to be with you for a lifetime. It's not going to be cured. It needs to be managed. We may have flu, for example, and that's easily diagnosed. It's easily treated. And we're going to go back to our normal way of being once we recover from the flu. With a chronic condition, it needs to be managed because things are going to change. It's going to be uncertain as to the treatment. It may be uncertain even as to the diagnosis. So it's a lot different than trying to manage an acute disease. And the other thing that I love about it is that it's peer-to-peer -peer versus medical. I mean, when you talk about chronic disease, everyone kind of gets into that whole discussion about what did the doctor say or and that's not what we do in the class. I mean, it comes up a lot of issues about sure. their doctors, <laughs> but not necessarily um, being led by a doctor or a nurse or anyone with those kinds of credentials. It's really you and I and who um, 
who have the conversation. So talk a little more about that. I mean, I know that Stanford put a lot of time, energy, and dollars into this and have a lot of evidence-based data that shows that it's wor working. Um, but just kind of talk about that. I think it's just really important. It's really partnering. It's a team effort rather than going to the doctor, taking his word verbatim and doing exactly, and not that we shouldn't go to a doctor or that we should not listen to the advice. But the key is that there are so many other things that we can do in addition to that. For example, we all know that if we eat healthily, it's going to improve our health, improve our condition. If we exercise, our bodies are going to last longer. They're going to be more mobile. We're going to have less pain. We can learn how to deal with stress. And all of these things we can do outside of the doctor's office. Basically, we spend a very brief time with the physician. We hear what they have to say, and sometimes we hear what we want to say here rather than what they're actually saying. So in the class, we also learn what questions should we ask? What's it important for us to be able to understand about that illness? So a lot of the responsibility comes back to us. And as I say, the support that you get in the workshop is also invaluable in helping to see how other people with the same condition or with different conditions have, have really the courage uh, to, to lead a very active and fulfilling life in spite of that condition. And the other thing that we, are, we do in the class is that people get a wonderful resource book. So maybe you want to talk about that a little bit. And then here in Monmouth, we have a little extra incentive for people to come. And I'll share that with you after you talk about the book. Great. Well, the book was, again, written by Stanford University. And although it follows the workshop, we don't ask the participants read it per se. They can choose the sections that are valuable to them. Many of them have found the exercise, for example, has really helped them to be able to do things on their own. There also is a lot of information about a variety of illness. And since we don't talk about the illness in the class, this is in addition uh, information that's in addition to what is given in the workshop. So it's very helpful. And at the end, we always hear from people that they have read it, they valued it, and found it very, very useful. So in Monmouth County, uh, SCAN has been the recipient of dollars here for the first year. Uh, I must say, startup was um, a little challenging, but we're in full swing now. Uh, we will have seven workshops in the fall. We'll have one here at SCAN, and again, it's for six days, um, and it's two and a half hours. And then we're also understanding that people can't come to us, so we're going to them. So we're going to the communities. We're going to be doing it in several of the libraries in Monmouth County and also um, several of the senior centers um, who have committed to doing this. And I'm really excited because we then get to touch and meet and talk about this to a lot of people that would never come here um, for a variety of reasons. Um, the other incentive is those who come to the Monmouth County sessions, besides getting the resource book, being with fabulous people, getting healthy desserts. We're also giving out um, a meditation CD for anyone who completes four of the six classes. So hopefully that'll be an encouragement for them to come and stay. Um, and then we're also inviting all of our, uh, all of our students who've taken the class to our annual luncheon um, so that they can reunite and not necessarily compare notes as far as their chronic disease, but how much the class has helped them become better health advocates for themselves. And that's what it's all about. It's really not talking about the doctor or the nurse, but how do I take care of me? So I'm really hoping that um, a lot of people sign up for our class that starts, I believe here, it's gonna be starting um, early October. So that's exciting. So anything, I mean, again, I want to take this opportunity because you have established a wonderful uh, network. You're a master trainer. I'm just a peer trainer. Um, and that means that you've gone through a lot of training, training to be that. And also you train lots of people. And so I don't know if people are aware that you have developed this wonderful uh, program with supportive materials with advertisement videos um, and that you're probably the lead in the state of New Jersey. So I'm happy to have you with us and to 
be associated with you. Um, we're looking forward to working with Ocean County in the future um, and coming to Ocean. So in the last couple of seconds, any closing remarks? Well, you said it all very, very well, you know, and we're actually very thrilled to be partnered with SCAN, too, and we're looking forward to you coming to Ocean County. We think that you have an awful lot to offer to the residents of Ocean County, and in particular, the people who attend our nutrition programs and the people who participate in our chronic disease self-management program. So can you give us the phone number before we leave for your particular program? Yes, it's 732-281-8391. So I would like to uh, thank you both for being with us, and we're out of time. Have a great day. Next, we will have our scan calendar, and then we will be returning with Andrea Tarr, our program director, who will be providing us with information about the fall semester. Hello again, I'm Pat Bose, the Executive Director of SCAN, and with me now is Andrea Tarr, the Program Director, and she's going to be sharing some fabulous new programs that we're introducing in the fall, and also special events. So welcome. Hey Pat, how are you? I'm great. Well, fall is shaping up to be very busy for us, which is great because in addition to having the campus of courses, which you know started in September but goes through mid-October, so that's keeping us busy. But of course, we're also rolling out some of our financial literacy programs. One of our new programs, one of signature, our signature programs. Right, one of our signature programs, and we have two of them scheduled for fall. And one of them is going to be, called, it's called A Day Late, and that one is uh, Wednesday, uh, October 23rd, from 1 to 2. So it's a day late and a dollar a short. A day late and a dollar short, And sorry. I think that that's probably everyone's motto lately. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So I think that one is very timely. That's going to be very good. And uh, let me just also mention that these are also, we're in the campus of courses, so that will be the first time we offer them, and then we'll have these actually here at SCAN. So what I want to do before... Before we go further, is I don't know if all of you is understand what the campus of courses are and where we hold them, okay. and that we're in the middle of them, but they're just open but to the public. Right, we still have more to go. So the campus of courses is a joint venture with SCAN and Boscov's department store, one of the anchor stores at the mall. And so in their third floor auditorium, which is a beautiful space, great acoustics, very comfortable. We program, we've got about, I think it's about 41 different one and done kind of sessions. Most of them are five dollars, many of them are free. And I mean we just cover the full gamut of everything from fun and entertainment to more serious and, and health issues. And everything does take place there. And they end about mid-October. Great. Thank you. So that's our campus of courses. So we are offering, so again, a day late and a dollar short. We'll be here at SCAN. And then the other one is called Your Future Paycheck. And that one is going to be, uh, oct not October, November 6th, also from 1 to 2, right here in our SCAN classroom. And so that particular show I'm excited about because it's for people who have not retired yet, who are thinking about it, and need to understand what, it, what you have to have uh, already available in order to, to, to yeah, retire. Yeah. So we're looking at, I think it's the five stu stool, the, the, the chair with five legs versus three, <laughs> right. um, especially in this economic time. So I hope people take advantage of that I and do come too. see it. I do too. We'll certainly have lots of publicity and uh, I think the two of them are going to be two really excellent examples of our um, signature program for PC, financial literacy. Absolutely. And let's see, what else is happening in the fall? Well, we also, of course, we have our, um, our annual luncheon, which our annual awards luncheon. And it's our 25th anniversary, as you know. So everything is especially spectacular. And I'm really happy because I'm new to SCAN, so I've not been here for 25 years, but we've had some loyal supporters throughout the 25 years, which include New Jersey Natural Gas, right. Monmouth Medical Center, the borough of Eatontown, who have been incredibly Very wonderful supportive. to us, and also the Mammoth Mall. the Mall. And so we will be honoring them yes. um, along with some leaders in the field of aging. So right. I'm excited. And that's on what date and where? That is uh, the annual. It's on October 15th. It's at Seabrook. 
and everyone is welcome. There'll be there's details on our website, and of course you can just call the office and you know and find out. The number to call. Uh, gee, seven three two seven three two five four two one three two six. Great. So we look forward to seeing lots of SCAN members there as well. Okay. What else do we have going on? Well, uh, coming up also is our birthday party. Yay! Our twenty fifth. We're twenty five. We're, 25, years old. we're so young. <laughs> And we look at yeah. Well, um, hmm. so anyway, yes, we're having a we're having a big party, and that'll be up hopefully in the food court. And you know, and the public's invited. Yes, everyone's invited. And that's October twenty. That is October twenty fifth, for our twenty fifth year, which is pretty hard to believe. So I'm looking forward to at least the next four or five. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the other, coffee for I, I, I'm going to talk about this one. Go ahead. We're going to be having our first Brain, Brain Fitness, Fitness Fair. That's going to be On awesome. November 8th here at SCAN and yes. in the mall. And I'm excited because we'll have a um, leader in the, the uh, field of total brain fitness, um, Dr. Cynthia Green. Yes. He'll do a presentation, but we're going to have stations throughout SCAN and the mall that are brain teasers um, that people can go visit. And if they are uh, visit 10 of the 15, we'll give them some prizes or they're eligible mm -hmm. for prizes. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that people will join us. And that's going to be like 10 to 2, so mark your calendars. We have a couple of more minutes left. Is there anything else in the horizon? I know that our Take Control of Your Health program is yes. rolling out. Yes, and we do have it scheduled uh, in the in the uh, October time frame. It's going to start October 1st. It goes for six weeks. It's on a Tuesday from 1 to 3.30. Again, you should just call the office to register because space is limited. And it's here at SCAN. It's right here at SCAN. And we provide healthy snacks. Healthy snacks, yeah. And wonderful atmosphere. Um, and meet some new people. Meet some new people. Get an excellent reference book when you're as you're participating, and you also get a great CD for relaxation when you get home. And the two things that I want to just put on the table is that we're looking for a few wonderful volunteers. The three programs that we're going to be rolling out is, um, besides our signature programs, is we're trying to develop some clubs. We're yes. going to have a travel club. We're going to be going to Mount Rushmore in 2014 and Normandy, France. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Just keep tuned for that information. I know, I know, amazing. The other is that we're looking for a lunch and learn volunteer where we can have lunch in the community and bring keynote speakers with us. And the final club is the theater club. The theater, yeah. That we can see if we can get free or cheap tickets for, for our members and seniors to participate in. So we're looking for a few wonderful volunteers right. to work with us on that. Right, to help And if us. they're interested, they can, again, get in touch with us at 732 542-1326. How to locate SCAN. SCAN is easy to locate once you find the movie theater at Mammoth Mall. As you enter the parking lot from Route 35, the theater is almost directly ahead of you. Drive towards the theater, but go up along the left side into the parking lot. As you approach the end, you will see entrance number three on your right. Park and enter the building here. Once inside, you will see a staircase that only goes down. After passing through the doors at the bottom, turn to your left and scan is right there.